So what I'm going to present you uh, uh, next is a uh, is a new concept in, in, in Raman imaging, right? So uh, we are trying to overcome current challenges of uh, of Raman imaging. So in Raman, there are a lot of people trying to to take this technique and 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 use it for in vivo or for cell biology, but <clears throat> As you see in this, uh, in this uh, uh, talk, we are really doing baby steps. Okay? We have a lot of problems, and we need to solve these problems until we reach to some realistic uh, uh, tool that you, know, you guys can, can use in a, with other problems on a daily basis. Right? And, and I'm going to touch uh, uh, upon two points. How can we speed up the imaging capabilities? And how maybe one day, we could actually do deep imaging uh, 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 with Raman, and this will exploit uh, uh, computational aspects. <clears throat> so uh, just a few words from the group. So uh, the group is run by me and Sylvain. Uh, uh, we are working on many different topics uh, revolving around uh, uh, complex media. Uh, you, uh, for instance, in biological tissues, it's, it's a complex material, but you also have other complex media like uh, uh, fibers. Like, that uh, Emmanuel just uh, presented. Uh, and by the end of the talk, if you like it, please uh, uh, poke me. We are hiring and would like to, to discuss in case you, you got this, uh, you got interested about this. So what is the Raman effect? Okay. So the atoms in a molecule, they are not stiff in place. Okay. They have the vibration of degrees of freedom. They can uh, uh, oscillate around their, their natural resting uh, position. And to each uh, uh, oscillation, we can assign a certain frequency. And to each frequency, we can assign energy. Now, when we change the masses of the, of the atoms, uh, uh, we're going to basically shift the, the, the position of, the, of this frequency. And here you see uh, uh, the vibrational response for different uh, 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 atomic combinations and, and also different types of, of chemical bonds. And, and basically, each molecule will have its own vibrational spectrum. Okay? So the vibrational spectrum is a fingerprint of a molecule. I look at the vibrational spectrum, I can tell which molecule I'm looking to. Right. So there are different ways of doing a, a, a vibrational spectroscopy. Uh, for instance, this, the energies involved on this is typically in the IR. Well, for imaging, IR is not great because the resolution is, is not uh, uh, is in the order of uh, uh, tens of microns of microns. Uh, so is the visible with the Raman light. So we basically have a, a, a narrow laser uh, uh, beam that excites uh, uh, a molecule. Then we hit, uh, hit a, a virtual state. And then uh, I quote uh, another uh, professor, molecules are stupid. Okay? They're going to give off a, a, a photon whenever they want. Okay? And this is what we call a spontaneous effect. They decide when they're going to emit. Okay? And then you go give off uh, this, uh, this uh, 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 energy here to a quanta of a vibrational uh, uh, energy here. And now the energy difference between those two will give us the vibrational spectrum. I know what I put in. I can measure what, what I got out. And the difference of the two can give me energies there are in the IR. Right. So <clears throat> what you can do is now take uh, 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 this spectroscopy approach and do vibrational imaging. Okay, so we have uh, now a 3D object. Uh, uh, um, here is the space, and then the third dimension is, is the spectrum. But these these peaks are not very narrow, like I showed before. They are uh, each different molecule will have actually overlapping uh, 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 features. So the amplitude of these peaks are not directly related to concentration of molecular species. So there is a whole uh, uh, field of research that actually is called chemometrics that is working out this data to transform in this. Okay? So these are now local concentrations of DNA, protein, and lipids of a single cell taken in a single shot. It's not a result from my group. Uh, this is nice because it shows, okay, in, in a, in a label-free manner, we can separate these three chemical uh, 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 biomarkers here. And uh, you say, well, uh, 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 it's not super sensitive. Actually, it is a super sensitive uh, uh, technique. Uh, in a label-free manner, you can get sensitivity down to a single layer of a, of a, of a lipid uh, uh, membrane. So here, for instance, we have characterized three different, uh, two different types of lipids and uh, 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 cholesterol. 
now there is a, a, a lot of activity uh, um, uh, in this field, uh, pushing this towards uh, 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 biological uh, applications. <coughs> and ultimately, we would like to, 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 to do this deep and in vivo, but we are very far from it from various challenges. The first one is that we have just way too much data that we cannot process this real time. Okay, so we have to develop tools that can reduce this this uh, uh, this this time that takes to to get to to the final image of biomarkers. Um, until recently, we didn't have a, 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 a super resolution capability, contrary to uh, uh, um, to fluorescence, and all of this is of course at the tip of the iceberg. So we can only image not even uh, 100 micron deep. Okay, so we're imaging here just a few microns deep in a, in a, in a biological species. So we were, we, I'm going to touch upon these two points here, OK? Uh, uh, how we can actually use computational uh, 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 microscopy uh, to, to tackle this uh, uh, challenge. Now, just a few words, what, what I mean by computational microscopy. So in computational microscopy, uh, um, we have a non-conventional device, right? So we design some optical system. In our case, we are often used uh, in this, this optical system, spatial light modulators. These are very mature technology. They can be fast, high throughput. So this is very important for us because uh, the signals are weak. Biological systems move, so we need to do all this, implement all these things in high speed uh, configurations. And, and the, other, the other part of, uh, of this computational microscopy aspect is that we need to do a, a modeling of this device we developed. Okay? So we call this typically the forward model. And then we get some raw data. Why? Um, this Y is basically uh, uh, something that I cannot interpret as a very easily, at least. So we have to develop some 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 reconstruction scheme, uh, uh, which will treat this data and then give me some useful information. This can be, for instance, an image, uh, uh, the spikely image that is reconstructed in a, some neat, well-resolved uh, image. This could be a super-resolved image. This could be a high-speed image, for instance. So let me just uh, uh, jump to one of these uh, 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 challenges here. How can we tackle the, uh, the penetration gap? And before I jump to, to, to uh, some of the results we have done uh, recently, I need to give you a, a, a crash course on, on, uh, on wavefront shaping. Okay? So uh, thanks, Manuel. You already explained part of, of, a, of the problem that we have in, a, uh, uh, in, in the complex media. So we take our laser. That we typically focus, or uh, uh, or if you have a plane wave in a wide field configuration, and we shine in a scattering material, let's say a piece of skin or of a piece of paint. The problem that we have uh, uh, is that at the output of this uh, of complex material, we're not going to have a, a focus. We're going to have a speckle pattern, right? And this speckle pattern comes from the fact that you have a, a complex interference phenomenon. So basically, you have multiple paths of of light going through this. Uh, material that interferes in a random way outside the material. Now, actually, uh, uh, there is, uh, when you look at this background, oh, this is all random, I can't do anything with it. But as a matter of fact, it, it's, if uh, for a given configuration of the scatterers, this is a deterministic process, right? So the field that I have in the output here in this speckle is deterministically related to the field that I have in the input uh, here, okay? <coughs> and this is, uh, 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 is better represented here in, in, a, in, a, in a complex plane. Um, so basically, in one point of my speckle, what I have is a coherent summation of different uh, uh, elements of this uh, uh, transmission matrix, right? So there was a seminal work in, in, in 2007 from Nivo uh, from Felicoup and, and Alar Moss. They thought, well, if this is deterministic, right, the only thing I need to do is to determine this. Right, but this is not a simple. Uh, 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 it was not a, a, a very simple uh, 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 object to retrieve the transmission mate, right? But they tried anyway. So the way they did is uh, they basically manipulated the, the, the input wavefront. So we're going to run some simulations to show you how this is done, and then they could basically transform one grain uh, of this packle in a very bright point. And when you have this very bright point, you can basically this is basically reminiscent of a focus. You could think, for instance, of raster scanning. This is 
uh, what uh, uh, Emmanuel has shown just uh, in, in the end of his talk. And the way they did this is, is like this. So we have a special light modulator here. So we sweep the phase uh, from 0 to 2 pi, right? And what you have, uh, you have an, uh, uh, an interference with some reference wave. You have a sinusoidal uh, modulation. You go and you pick up the, the optimal phase of this. And then you repeat the same procedure for all the points that you have in your, in your SLM. And then you can see this is the intensity of this point here. We're targeting the output of this point. Bit by bit, we transform this sparkle, I'm sorry, uh, into a bright point. This is reminiscent of a, of a focus. And you can use that for a, a fast image, for imaging, sorry, if you're able to, to, to scan it. And this is the complex field representation of, the, of this whole process. This is great, but this only works for uh, one point. If you want to find the solution for the other points, you need to repeat this, point, this procedure iteratively. So Sylvain uh, uh, and colleagues, uh, uh, Sylvain Gigan in Paris uh, and colleagues have uh, uh, put up uh, a different scheme. They call the transmission matrix uh, 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 characterization. Just briefly do this. So instead of uh, 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 characterizing from one point of your transition matrix, now you have they developed a system, a way to actually have the full characterization of this uh, uh, transmission matrix. And when you know this transmission matrix, right? So you don't need to repeat this procedure over and over to focus in on some other point. So you can, once you know it, you can focus here, and you can focus at will at any point that you want. Okay, just one, one step of a metric. But you, you may realize this is uh, this is in transmission, right? So nobody here wants to swallow a camera to do the characteriz characterization of the of the transmission matrix, right? So we have a lot of things to to uh, 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 to solve until we actually can use this for uh, 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 um, realistic imaging. The first one is just mentioned, nobody wants to solve a camera. So we need to be non-invasive. I'll explain quickly what, what I mean by that. The second one, we want to get reach very large field of views. Typically, the field of views of the techniques we, I'm going to describe, are, uh, uh, they are fairly small in the order of a few microns. We want to do when things move. So this needs to be computationally efficient. Well, this is not necessarily a problem for you guys. Uh, we often have very complicated setup in, the, in, in, in biological imaging. Um, <clears throat> so the non-invasive is, is, is basically uh, 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 related to this problem here. So we want to reach a feedback uh, uh, signal uh, uh, to this, this, this type of, of algorithm that can generate a focus inside the material, not outside the material, right? Uh, using this uh, 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 wavefront shape uh, 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 techniques. And this is all, all I'm going to show you here is, is very proof of principle experiments, uh, 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 baby steps. Uh, um, so that's why I always insist this is really towards uh, that direction. And then what we want to do here is instead of having this camera uh, 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 in the transmission, we want to place this camera, sorry, oh, there you go. Uh, here in the back of it, right? Uh, uh, and generate a focus here. So this is the first step. I'm not going to generate a focus in the material. I'm going to generate the focus uh, through the material, but I'm not going to uh, resolve the, the speckle there. So this is a, 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 toy, a toy model for, for, for demonstrating uh, a technique, right? And to do that, uh, there are different uh, uh, techniques that can do this, uh, nonlinear optics. Uh, ultrasound, uh, like uh, I'm gonna explain, and others here. What I want to see, to, 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 I want you to realize here is that no linear optics methods actually can can achieve this effect. And and, and, and the intuition is very following, uh, is, is very simple. Uh, is the following? So we have two beads, okay? And uh, if I start focusing the two beads, the intensity I'm gonna collect from these two beads is exactly the same. Uh, or if, for instance, I just focus on one of the beads, okay? Because of the linearity of the problem, I'm integrating the total signal. I cannot resolve the intensity of these two beads uh, there. So I cannot distinguish with the uh, intensity matrix if I'm focusing one bead or another bead, or the two beads at the same time, with linear fluorescence. This is not the case if you would use some nonlinear optical uh, 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 process. Okay, how can you... Uh, uh, actually try to do this with linear optical processes, like say linear fluorescence, Raman, and so on and so forth. 
So the first thing I need to explain is what happens to the contrast. So I take a laser, I shine in my scatter material, I have a, 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 fluor a fluorescence bead, right? Or a point sort. This is gonna emit uh, uh, um <coughs> some, uh, some speckle. And these are typically in the linear processes, uh, they are incoherent, like in spontaneous Raman and, and fluorescence. So they, if I have two beads, they're not gonna coherently interfere, they're gonna, uh, uh, inco uh, they're gonna be measured incoherently at my detector. And if I look at my, uh, uh, my contrast, uh, I see that my contrast, as I increase the number of sources, it decreases uh, accordingly. And as a matter of fact, we know very well how the, the, uh, what is the scaling of the, uh, uh, of the contracts with, with the number of, uh, of beads that we have in this uh, uh, material. So this is great because now we can computationally uh, 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 characterize a metric. So this was an idea put up by Antoine, uh, uh, Baptiste, and Jonathan. Uh, so we can look at the variance of this path. So the variance is nice because it tells us uh, some things about the intensity. Well, I'm focusing or not, I'm increasing or not the intensity of the, uh, at one bit or not, but also tells me at the contrast, am I focusing one or multiple bits, okay? So there is information uh, 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 in the variance that embeds both the, the intensity and the number of the bits. So they put up an experiment uh, um, to, to demonstrate this. Uh, so basically, they, uh, what they are doing here, they are, uh, uh, um, this is uh, the wavefront uh, uh, pattern that they are optimizing. And they're looking at the variance uh, of the speckle. They're optimizing the variance and sweeping the, 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 the wavefront. And then they can show, okay, it's very, you're gonna see in the next one, that we start with a speckle, and then at some point you have just a single point uh, 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 here. Okay, so this is uh, an image taken uh, in the transmission, okay, we, we just use this image for characterization, okay, this, there is no information in this procedure here based on this, this image, just to demonstrate that it focused, and you can see nicely that it focused on a single bead, so you can see they made this for a few uh, beads there. Great, let's use this for Raman. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because in Raman, <coughs> everything, is flor uh, uh, everything is Raman active, okay? In, in, fl in fluorescence, you can control to a certain extent the, 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 the sparsity, the labeling sparsity, in Raman not, right? My cover slip is Raman active, the water is Raman active, and what this, uh, what this means is that if I look at the, my, my, uh, my, my, my speckle, my speckle will be basically dominated by my background signal. So if I have some beads that are Raman active there, I'm only gonna see basically my, my, in my background here. So the contrast that I'm gonna record is basically coming from the from the, from the background. So one, one, one simple way to get rid of this uh, 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 problem is to do spectroscopy, imaging spectroscopy. So instead of uh, now uh, uh, seeing black and white of the, uh, of the speckle, we're gonna pick, pick up one uh, line of the speckle and put in an imaging spectrometer. So in one dimension, we're uh, seeing the speckle, and in the other dimension, we're seeing this line of the of the uh, of the speckle, and in this way we can basically better uh, select the 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 the, the, the feedback uh, signal from uh, from the, the target uh, uh, beads. So this is a, a, a how this, the experiment looks like. So we have a laser source. Uh, I think she did it rather wrong, but it, 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 it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, that it's, uh, that it's green light typically. Uh, we uh, uh, basically uh, make a scattering material in the back of a cover slip, and then we have some uh, Raman active particles that we uh, send back the Raman light to uh, 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 an imaging spectrometer, and then you typically have one dimension the spectrum, and then the, uh, uh, the space. Uh, if you integrate along the, the, the spatial direction, you have the, uh, uh, basically this is mostly the, 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 the signal from the glass, the Raman spectrum of the glass, and you have this tiny little guy there here, which is the, 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 the diamond. So if you don't have the spectrometer, you would see basically the integral of this, of this curve. So you can clearly see that you don't see any peak uh, uh, without the, the spectroscopy uh, uh, approach. So Bing Xin, uh, Antoine, and, and, and Bernard worked out uh, this uh, uh, setup. So what they have done is basically implement this uh, variance-based optimization. So. In blue, uh, in red, you see the, the, as the, uh, how the variance changed as a function of 
iteration of the, of, of the wave front. And you can see that also there is an, an increase in intensity. And after the, uh, the procedure is uh, uh, done, um, you can see that the, 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 uh, there is a, like eight times-ish uh, 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 incre uh, increase of the uh, 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 Raman peak. We can uh, check if there was really a single focus. So this is without any shaping. And after the shaping, actually, we, we did this experiment tens, hundreds of times, and then uh, we don't see a focus. And, and the problem is that the diamond is high refractive index uh, distortion a lot. So we had to move the bead a little bit to the side uh, uh, to see the, uh, 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 the focus. So this was nice, and it showed that uh, we could converge to a single focus in the spot. Great. This took so really a while to, to get it done. Okay, never going to work in a, in, 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 a, in a biological system. And one of the problems is that we have we are using cameras, and we take these very few photons, and we spread in a in a in, a, um, in this detector. So uh, uh, we are in the noise. So is there a way that we can get rid of this camera and make a more uh, sensitive uh, measurement? And this typically is done with a bucket detector. We want to now integrate this whole signal. With a, with a single pixel detector, with a bucket detector, and, 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 and achieve uh, 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 DP. But we are not there yet, OK? Uh, 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 <clears throat> so this is, I couldn't find an equivalent in, in, in English. So we're, we're going to do a small detour to get to our goal. Because we have uh, this hindrance of signal levels in, 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 in Raman, uh, we also need to, to establish a setup. So we, we, we're going to start with an experiment with the fluorescence, OK? Just a proof of principle. So basically, what we do here, uh, we modulate our incoming wave front uh, with run, random patterns. We excite some fluorescence, and we're going to uh, get in the, uh, 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 the signal, integrate the signal without resolving the speckle that this, this object has emitted. Now, <coughs> so basically, I, uh, the measurements that was, uh, was set up are an array Y. Uh, the, the wave fronts will set up a, 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 a matrix A. And I can cast this problem in a, a so-called phase retrieval problem, uh, 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 where Y I know, A I know. But I want to know, actually, whether, uh, what is T, because these are the wave fronts that are, uh, allow me to focus in a single point, and the object O. This is a very uh, difficult problem to solve uh, uh, computationally. Okay. So uh, Shubhan came up with a trick. OK, let's Im uh, embed O in the T. And let's redefine the transmission matrix, right, with a, with a smaller uh, t. And now we can write the, in this form here, OK? So y I know, a I, I know, and t I don't know. But this is a much more tractable problem, OK? So this we call a multiplex phase retrieval. So this is a, a relatively simple. We can write an algorithm called the gradient descent to solve for, for t. And, and it works, OK, without a problem. And one nice thing that we found out is, uh, 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 is that when, when, when p equals 1, so this is basically a linear fluorescence, we're going to get solutions. Okay? But what are these solutions? When you look at these solutions, they are not what we call, they are not unique. If I try to focus, they're not going to focus in one single point of my object. They're going to focus in multiple points of the object. And this is, you don't want to do this. Uh, when you're doing imaging, right? So if I do, for instance, rest scanning with these multiple points, you're going to have a blurred uh, 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 image. So they, uh, uh, they, uh, they were happy about the simulations. Let's, let's try to do a proof of principle experiment with this. Uh, for technical reasons, we had to put our detector in the transmission, but don't worry. Uh, uh, it doesn't resolve this pack. We're just in integrating the intensity here. We have this camera to double check that uh, everything is working uh, fine. Uh, uh, so the same scheme as before. We have the, 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 the cover slip roughen, and we have the beads, and we're exciting with the two float on uh, uh, fluorescence here. So this is uh, uh, the intensity uh, versus the number of random patterns that we show in our, our in our uh, SLM. So you can see nicely that uh, from the beginning to the end, there is barely any change of intensity. So there is no photo bleaching, uh, which is nice for when you do this wave from shaping experiment. We, we run this algorithm, we find the, 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 the solutions, and we can see that we can focus on each individual beast individually. And if we compare uh, the focal qualities with the number of beads, there is a good match between the two, which shows that 
uh, 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 the method uh, work. And we are working on this to, 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 to try to push it to uh, other uh, nonlinear Raman uh, um, uh, approaches. There we go. So just uh, partial conclusions from this part. So we're trying to, 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 to bit by bit, push these this concepts that have been developed in way from shaping to uh, 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 Raman imaging. We have proposed a, a, a single pixel uh, uh, framework uh, uh, to do that, and that this single pixel framework, at least, it has unique solutions for nonlinear optical problems. Now, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, now change gears, OK? We're going to tackle uh, a second problem, spectral image, OK? Uh, and this is, let's say, a, a little bit, it's not baby steps, it's adolescent steps, OK? Uh, we are not yet adults. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of, of, of applications here, but we're getting there. Um, and this is uh, uh, within a co framework that we call compressive uh, 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 Raman imaging. So the basic idea here uh, uh, um, is that, so I showed you this, this, this hyperspectral, this spectral image, so this space versus time. So typically in a conventional uh, uh, Raman image, you would basically image this whole hyperspectrum here, right? So this is a lengthy procedure. Sometimes it's a bottleneck for imaging uh, acquisition speed. So what we do here, uh, instead of having the full acquisition of the, of the hyperspectral, we're going to undersample it with different uh, uh, schemes. And then we're going to use this algorithm to reconstruct the information as if we had acquired the whole uh, 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 hyperspectral. So now, <clears throat> This is how typically people doing fluorescence microscopy would look at Raman, okay? Or even people doing coherent microscopy uh, 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 would look at Raman. And uh, ah, there we go. So uh, what we do with this, this Raman microscope here, we train it for very specific tasks. It's not an universal microscope that can tackle any, any problem. But we train it uh, uh, very well, okay? And then instead of having a very uh, slow turtle, we actually can uh, speed this turtle up and, and, and really reach uh, a high speed imaging uh, uh, with that. So uh, how does it work? So this is the typical pipeline that you have in a, uh, 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 spontaneous Raman. So you have an object, you acquire the hyperspectrum, use these chemometric tools, and then <clears throat> basically in the end what you have is just a few images, okay? So you never have an infinite amount or at least seven images for the number of, spect of, 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 a, of a spectral frequency, right? So this is what we call, it is a sparse chemical space, okay? So I can take this hyperspectrum here, for instance, let's take a cell, okay? A cell is made of thousands and thousands of molecules. But I cannot discern, uh, because I have, uh, the, 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 uh, the resolution of my microscope is not single molecule, right? We always see in the aggregates of, of molecules, I cannot discern each single molecule. So I always have some combination, linear combination of, the, of these different types of, of molecules. So you can run some, some uh, uh, PCA, SVD, uh, some, uh, uh, some data analysis. Uh, they'll try to find these, these, these species of this uh, hyperspectrum here. And then that after all, even for a cell, very complicated thing, you can only have, I don't know, let's say tops 10 species. I can only discern with Raman microscopy about five to 10 species for a very complex uh, system. So this is what we call the sparse chemical space. We're gonna exploit a lot this, this feature in, the, in this compressive Raman. And another nice thing is that it's a sparse spectrum which can be uh, nice to speed up acquisition because there are many points where we don't have any signal to start with. So this is the, 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 the philosophy. Now we jump to the hardware how this hardware looks like. So this is a conventional spectrometer. We typically do confocal, okay? So we take the light from the one point, we shine to the spectrometer. So we have a grading, a lens, and a CCD. Uh, we get rid of the CCD, which are, are, are very expensive in, in the case of, 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 of Raman, and we place instead a digital micromirror device. So these are spatial light modulators, uh, binary spatial light modulators, where it can modulate on and off the amplitude of, of life. So basically, at, it acts as a spectral filter, a very fast spectral filter, to be detected with a single pixel uh, 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 detector. And, 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 and the, the, the catch here is that this, this is what we call the, a single photon uh, avalanche uh, uh, photo detector, a SPAD. 
the nice thing about this pad is that you don't have uh, readout noise, okay? Different from, from, from fluorescence where you have a lot of signal. In Raman, you're detecting, I don't know, 10 to 30 photons. And these 10 to 30 photons can be very close to the readout noise of your, of your detector, which is, is, is a bigger problem. So we, we, uh, um, we're going to uh, uh, typically uh, split the framework in two uh, uh, different schemes. We call uh, unsupervised uh, uh, chemical imaging and supervised. So the unsupervised here means that I don't know the spectrum of the system. Okay? I'm going to try to retrieve what is the spectrum of, of the system. Uh, but I know how many, how many chemical species there is in these systems, right? And, and this is called uh, the matrix completion uh, 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 algorithm. I'm going to run through it uh, uh, very quickly. And this was uh, uh, an idea put up by Jonathan and, and, and Fernando. So basically, if you have this hyperspectrum instead of a 3D, now a 2D, so this is spectrum in space. <coughs> so this is a rank one matrix, okay? This is the, the spectrum of this rank one matrix. Um, and this is another uh, uh, rank one matrix for another chemical uh, uh, species. Now, if I mix the two, I have a rank two matrix, right? Uh, so I'm mixing the two. And because uh, uh, I have many more measurements than the number of, 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 of spectral uh, uh, pixels that I want to retrieve, right? In, ba in principle, I can write an algorithm that actually is able to retrieve this uh, uh, hypothetical spectrum here, right? I have much more measurements than the number of, of the spectral uh, uh, components that I want to retrieve, right? It also means that because I have too many measurements, I can skip a little bit of this, this information and then retrieve the spectrum and put this information back, okay? And what I just explained you is the concept of low rank matrix completion. So this is a, 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 a well-established mathematical framework you are using right now in your telephones, in recommender systems. Uh, Netflix use it. Um, basically, any recommender system, LinkedIn, uh, you name it, are, are, are using this type of algorithm because you have always uh, a structure in your, in your data. So what it does here is instead of solving to find M, the algorithm will actually solve to find, uh, uh, so uh, we work to solve a, a smaller problem, which is retrieving these smaller uh, 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 matrices here. Once I find these two matrices, I can multiply them, and then I can basically uh, fill in these bits of information that I had not acquired initially in, the, in my uh, hyperspectrum. So like I said, we do a, 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 a confocus, so the, 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 <coughs> the implementation is like this. Um, we have a, a, a confocal microscope, and as we scan the confocal microscope, we are basically selecting the random samples at the, this very fast uh, uh, programmable uh, spectrometer equipped with, with, the, with, the, with the DMD. By the end of, uh, of the scan, it, it looks like this. So we have a, a spectrum and space. Uh, so you see dark blue here is either data that was not taken or the signal is just zero because the, anyways, we're detecting 30, 10 to 30 photons in this process, so it's a very weak uh, uh, a signal. So we run this algorithm uh, using this uh, uh, sparse chemical basis assumption, so the matrix completion. And uh, you can see here uh, that this, the reconstructed spectrum looks as we expect for polystyrene in the background, background being the water and the glass. <coughs> I'm sorry. And um, if we can do a, a false color uh, image, so green is the beads, uh, polystyrene beads and, and red is the, uh, the background. 50% means that I'll, I skipped 50% of the information in this acquisition procedure. And actually, you can push this 10 times, so you can only acquire 10% uh, of, uh, of the information. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. And, and of course, uh, the algorithm has a har harder time to find a solution, right? So you see that there is an increase in the noise. But there are many applications where this is not a big deal because I still have a high chemical contrast. There is not a lot of yellow in this image, so it's either red or, or, or green, okay? So it works nice. Uh, it works nice, uh, um, but it can do something else. Uh, uh, what we call supervised uh, 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 chemical image. Now suppose I want to, to, to image with chemical selectivity another sample. So I don't need necessarily to run this algorithm again, okay? So I can basically uh, 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 set up uh, a different set of filters. 
So I define a matrix P, which is basically the, 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 the spectrum that I just learned from the, from the previous algorithm. Uh, I define op, uh, uh, filters that I'm going to show in my uh, uh, DMD. And the measurement that can be modeled this way, so the, the photons that I detect is basically uh, uh, the, the outcome of the, of the dot product of the filter with the spectrum, which is a linear combination of these two species here, right? So this is the, the, the analytical formulation. I don't, I don't want to have photons. I want to know concentration of, of, of species. And uh, um, this is just a simple field inverse here. And the trick here is that in order uh, uh, to reach the highest sensitivity in this measurement, you need to design optimal filters uh, uh, F, right? Um, <clears throat> the nice thing about this approach here is that the compressions that we have can be very high, right? So typically in the order of 100. So it's basically the number of spectral beams divided by the number of chemical uh, 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 species. And you can get, depending on the signal levels, uh, quite a high uh, speed gain. If your, your sample is relatively bright, uh, this can be uh, much faster than a, a conventional uh, uh, camera. So when I started this business, uh, 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 when I was a postdoc in, in, in the group of, of Sophie Brasilier, so Camille was the first one uh, 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 um, uh, to work on, uh, uh, on this project. And this was uh, nice. She could set up this, this, this experiment there uh, to show a very interesting uh, result, at least uh, for us. So this is a ma mixture of polystyrene and melamine. So here are the filters we found in the spectrum. And here we are detecting just about 10 to 30 photons in this image, OK? So this you cannot do with a conventional camera. These 10 photons will be in the readout noise of your camera. You're never going to manage, OK? And with this detector, because we don't have any readout noise, we are able to, to, to see this uh, uh, signal uh, 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 neatly. <coughs> so when I moved to Paris, uh, I wanted to push this to uh, 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 bioimage. So we, uh, uh, we, use, uh, um, uh, we had collaborators that uh, gave us some um, brain slice. Um, so what you're seeing here uh, uh, in, uh, in red is basically the, the, um, the lipid-rich uh, 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 channel. It's a bit hard to see, uh, uh, but you have blue uh, uh, here, which is a protein uh, uh, lipid uh, 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 channel, right? So you're just basically seeing this, this part of the, of the neural cells. And we know this assignment based on the literature. So this is the spectrum we retrieve. So we have these two uh, species, the, 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 the red and, and, and the blue. And uh, it's well known in the literature that if we have, uh, for instance, protein, the spectrum is, uh, is blue shifted, and if we have uh, lipids, is uh, uh, red shift and it's exactly what we get. Okay, so this was very uh, uh, reassuring for us that uh, we are getting spectral uh, information that is in, in, in line with the, what is done in literature. But it was a, what, what was exciting this type of image before we could only be done with coherent Raman. Okay, and coherent Raman is easily ten times more expensive than uh, the spontaneous uh, uh, Raman. So this was nice. So we had uh, uh, something uh, low cost and and high speed. And I'm going to finish uh, with uh, this little bit here. Can you go beyond? Can we actually try to, uh, uh, to reach video rate imaging with this? OK, so now this last image took about 10 seconds. And we have some new developments. This will be very briefly. So this is the conventional confocal microscope. What I'm doing is the image of a point integrating the DMD and this pad. Instead of having a, a point, we, have, we can excite with a line. Okay. But you need to uh, parallelize the measurement, OK? You cannot make this measurement serial. So you, you now you image each point of this line in a SPAD array, OK? And by doing so, you can increase the acquisition speed by the number of pixels uh, uh, you have. So Clemence uh, uh, joined the group to, 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 to make this uh, uh, demonstration. So in this experiment here, we did a, a, a 3D image of, of, pol of polystyrene, PMMA, and, 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 and water. And this took, uh, uh, for each point, uh, it's uh, 33 uh, uh, micro microseconds. So this is a pixel dwell time. And nowadays, we can actually push this uh, uh, to video rate image. We are not yet doing video rate. There is a lot of engineering to be done. But the time that we take to, to get this image is in a fraction of uh, uh, 40 to 30 uh, 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 milliseconds. Okay. So we can see that, of course, when we increase the speed, we, increase, uh, uh, we have less photons detected. But we can still have quite a high contrast, chemical contrast uh, uh, in this image, 
which is nice for many, many uh, 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 different uh, uh, applications. And this is nice with the, the, this approach is that it's a lot cheaper than we have in, in coherent grammar. Okay, so the partial conclusion number two is in order to, to, I hope you're convinced you that in order to speed up the Roma measurement and make it uh, uh, in line with the, with the tools that you typically have in, 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 in bioimaging, we have to skip a lot of things, okay? <clears throat> and to do that, we have two different types of approach. One we call the unsupervised, the other one we call supervised. And uh, we didn't do for any, for every possible biological cells. We are working on that, for instance, now in bacteria. <clears throat> and, 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 and so far it's working fine, at least with these few samples that we uh, looked into. Personally, I think that, 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 that if you want to really bring this, this technology to a mature st uh, 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 stage where it can be used for, for, for non-specialists, right? Uh, we want to develop tools that is not used by, uh, 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 by someone who had done vibration spectroscopy before, right? So we need to combine these non-conventional tools with, uh, 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 with the algorithm. And I want to emphasize again that these are really baby steps. We're really far away of, of, of walking here. So I'm just showing my kid uh, 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 walking for the, for the first time. And, he, and he, he, a lot of times we fall and we need to raise back again and, and, and try to find better ways to, to improve that. Thank you very much. I would just... Thanks, Hilton, for the talk. Um, I'm not sure to understand why you have only a small number of molecules in your <laughs> Raman system. Is it because you have like, not good enough resolution in your spectroscopy or too much noises or, or uh, whatever? Yeah, fundamentally is because we have a finite uh, 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 optical resolution. What we see in a 300 nanometer spot is already a combination of the spectra of different chemical species, right? Uh, and, and, and that's it. We cannot discern, if we would have an, uh, single uh, molecule resolution, then we would have, uh, uh, the, the, the rank would be uh, the number of chemical species you have in your system. But because of this finite numerical resolution, we cannot discern. Okay, thank you. Another question? Can you just, just briefly recall, how long does it to take? For example, the last image you've shown on tissues, and is there any chance to do this one, so something living? So this one was uh, from 2017, 18? Ten this took yeah. 10 seconds. Yes. And this one, uh, we, did not, we did not do yet uh, uh, living systems, but signal level wise, uh, uh, should be comparable. So this we, it took, uh, what, 40 milliseconds? Okay, this for the beads. Uh, if you go for biological system, we maybe have a factor of 10 uh, tops uh, uh, lower signal. So let's say 400 milliseconds. Yeah. We yeah, expect. That's, that's already something we have For, very for fast. spontaneous Raman, this is, uh, this is very fast. Uh, very fast. Yeah. 